people wonder what are we going to be doing in heaven? You know, what is it? And um, and then you've heard the age old stuff about oh, you're just going to be singing in heaven. It's just going to be church for the rest of your life for all of eternity. And for some people here, you know, even for me at times, you'll think church forever. My gosh, you know, some sermons you can't even stay awake and for your the rest of your life sitting in a pew. Is that what heaven really is going to be like? <clears throat> so, I wonder. Um, so today we're going to talk about that. Uh, but before we get into it, I want to ask you guys, what do you know? What do you think, before we get into it, what do you think we're going to be doing in heaven for eternity? Thoughts. Be creative. Imaginative. Well, I was brought up with the whole thing. We're going to be singing forever. And praising the Lord and just that's all but when that you know, one um, speaker came to class he said that everybody's gonna have a role everybody's gonna have a job and it's just gonna be your life when when did you hear that the, the speaker you brought the oh really that. he said that yeah I don't remember everybody has a role to play that's awesome I like that all right, so Josh said he grew up believing you're going to be singing in heaven forever. Yeah. Even if you can't sing well, for some of us, you know, it's not, we're going to have a, we're not going to like that, but what do you think? Kim, what do you think you're going to be doing in heaven? When you get there, for the rest of eternity, no end, what could you possibly do? Um, I kind of believe what Josh says, how we're just going to be singing, but I feel like it's kind of be, it's going to be kind of like the same here on earth, like, where we can, like, talk to each other and not just, like, always singing, like, you know, like, the Bible, yeah, like, the Bible says it's going to be a beautiful place, and so, like, um, I don't know, I think it's going to be a beautiful place, so it's not just singing the whole time, but, like, talking to each other, just, everything's so perfect, now that we're with Jesus. All right. So we'll be enjoying friendship, talking, singing, a lot of singing now. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? What do you think? And I, I'm not no expert, okay? This is, we're going to just dive in today. But what do you think? Just thoughts. Ain't no wrong answer. I'll tell you what, if we had candy, oh, I do. I'll give, just if you try, I'll give you some of these. We just need some triers. <laughs> not you, sorry. Next one's the next one. Hey, bro, why are you giving? Look at that. So for the camera, you don't know, but David's finger's broken, and it happened to be his middle finger. <laughs> he was stuck in a straightforward pose. <laughs> um, anybody else? Steve, what do you think? Uh, we're gonna be uh, reunited with our loved ones, and we have seen we're gonna be. Uh, Alright. Do you think you'd get tired after a hundred years of singing? No. Consistently? No, because it's not part of the, our nature in heaven. We won't get tired. We won't grow rest. No, rest no exhaustion. We no just gonna be happy. No All right. no the angels worship you. The angels, yeah. No There's, negative no negative uh, emotions. So do you know of any scriptures that why do we think there's going to be singing? Because there was some things we've seen in Revelations and even in Isaiah where he said he saw God and there was a, um, those big angels, the seraphim, and there was the 24 elders bowing and this is happening day and night, you know, constantly praising. And I think that's where we get the idea. And, and it's true, every time you, you hear heaven, you read it, there's singing worshiping occurring. Why is that? Will we be doing that forever? That's the question you're going to answer. I think it will be somebody's job. Like somebody's duty. Uh-huh. So that's the field. And then everybody Probably else has some... Hillsong, else. they'll be in charge of all the worship. <laughs> and then we're going to be doing the other stuff. Hillsong, probably Elevation Worship, they're going to be in that side. All right. Let's talk about it. All right, so I've been thinking about it, and I was thinking about how to approach it this week, and uh, here's what I came up with, okay? Uh, so 
the great lies of our time. So there's two, right, that we've been thinking, we've been studying about. One is that hell doesn't really exist. And that's pretty much widespread across, you know, most of our generation. Hell, nah, it don't really exist. Or it's a big party, right? Like we learned at the forum. It's a big party. My friends are going to be there. Um, God would, he could not send anyone there. Any loving God, you know, if you love your kids, you will not whip them. You know, that's kind of the idea. Uh, and will God, a loving God, ever punish somebody like that forever? And the second lie is that heaven is boring. And I think that's one that maybe we don't even touch the subject because we're like scared maybe it is boring. But I don't know. I'd rather just be, I'd rather be there than anywhere else. I mean, than hell, hell being in God's presence is a waste of time. Worshiping forever, my. You know, all the good and fun stuff is worse. God's rules don't exist. That one I just came up with. I was just thinking in my mind, what was I thinking when I was younger? You know, and that's what we think. You know, well, it, where there's no parents around, we can do whatever we want. That's where I want to be. And we think that's actually the, the best. And if heaven is where God's rules are, which we really, some of us don't like even now, how are we going to like that? So these are some of the common misconceptions, but are they true or not? We'll find out. Carla thinks so. So the great lies. Um, so I was trying to figure out how to tackle this with us, but I had to tackle it the way I kind of saw it. And thinking about heaven, um, here's what I just but what's been touching me is that everything, when you think about heaven, what it's going to be like, imagine this, if everything good does come from God, all right, if that's true, and I'll show you a scripture in a minute, if everything good comes from God, then what would heaven be like? If everything good comes from God, what would heaven be like? All right, so let's think back to Adam and Eve. Anybody remember what happened? Or what, what the garden heaven, what, what the garden was like. Um, any imagery you guys can think of? Peaceful, the all the creatures got along with each other. Yeah. No, <laughs> no shedding of blood. There was no killing. Yeah. Everybody was naked and not afraid. There was no shame. No shame. All right, were, was Adam and Eve constantly worshiping were, God? Were Adam and Eve. No, they had a job. Sorry, we're Adam and Eve. We're Adam and Eve worshiping God the whole time. Praising Him, singing. They had a job. They were doing something. You know? Not that it's wrong. We're going to touch on that in a second. But uh, everything good comes from God. Okay, God created the Adam and Eve in the garden. Okay, this, is, this was the creation. This is what He had always hoped for. He started it there. And we think back to it, and they were... They were, God created human beings, put them in a garden, and gave them a task. Take care of the world. And, you know, there's debate on whether it was actually seven days or if those days were thousands of years. You know, that debate we're not going to get into. But they were put on the earth to take care of it. All right? They didn't have to sweat for their food. and we're, that, that, We'll talk about that in a minute. They weren't affected by disease. They weren't, they weren't afraid somebody was going to come rob them, that the bears were going to eat them. They were cared for, totally fulfilled. God was with them, walking with them. They had everything they needed. And they had a relationship with God, face to face, walked with Him. All right, that's how it was in the beginning, with Adam and Eve. And so we're talking about heaven, but we're starting at the beginning. What would God, what kind of heaven would God create? Looking back to the beginning of the world, this is what he created. Would God force people to worship him for eternity? Uh, that was something I was thinking about. Would God force people to worship him for eternity? So if, if it's singing, if singing is the thing to do forever, worship God. Um, you know, would God force people to do that? Would he say, you know, well, you're not coming in unless you do this or, you know. And, and I guess what the question I'm trying to get to is, why, why do you think 
there's always singing. I'm going to phrase that right, but why do you think there's always singing in heaven? Every time you read it, worshiping, uh, praising, angels bowing, and all these elders throwing their <laughs> crowns. Why do you think that's happening? Any thoughts? Well, say for you, okay, when Julia gets to heaven, when she meets God, why would she do that? Would she bow? You know, you can see that, you remember that song, I can only imagine what my eyes will see. Why would you worship Him? Because it is going to be something you're going to do. You are going to do it. The Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Why? I think being in the presence of God, like even if we think about like movies, like being in the presence of a king would like initiate like awestruck. So, and if he's like, can I have your field? You'd be like, yeah, take them. They're yours, whatever. So, I feel like giving stuff over and just being so like in awe of God's like majesty and presence that you would want to sing. Like, I don't feel like even if we were to sing forever, I don't think we would feel like, oh, I'm getting tired of it now yeah. because it's just so, right. you're just so overwhelmed yep. that it's like never ending. Mm. Okay. And, um, I, cause I've been, I just think, you know, a lot of people have the, like most of us, even we, we kind of said that our view of heaven is that everybody's going to be singing, you know, it's going to be so boring and um, not that you guys think it's boring, but that's a common thought, you know, for especially young, younger kids, you know, heaven, all it's all we're going to do is worshiping church. But if God won't force you into heaven, you know, if, he, if hell is a place to where you can, you, you have an option to choose. And, why, you know, he's not going to force you to sing, but every time we hear about this in the Bible, everybody's singing. That means that it's somehow it's voluntary. Somehow you just can't help it. When you're in the presence of God, like Carla was saying, you're before a king, you just can't help it. Something in you just, what the, I can't, oh my goodness. I imagine it as a, when you go to a concert, and it's, right, the praise is so good, and you have that feeling inside, mm -hmm. and then some people cry, some people raise their hands. I think it's going to be a constant, leave that feeling in front of, the, I mean, in the presence of God. So you're just praising and praising and praising. Anybody else have thoughts? And the, so the reason why I took it back to the garden was because, <laughs> you know, God originally made creation. We had this perfect opportunity, and it wasn't, He didn't make man and woman to be in His presence just to worship Him forever. He made Him so that He could live and to breathe and to 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 create and to multiply and you know so I wonder if we're gonna if that's the idea that we're gonna be doing in heaven versus the idea of being in a you know in a brown God worshiping forever and ever and ever if that's if, if we are gonna be worshiping which I believe we are it'll be because we cannot help it not because we're forced to not because that's what we're supposed to do but because when you're in his presence you just can't you just can't help it. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's all this worship and stuff happening in the Bible. It's always in there. You'll see it. It's because that's the natural response in the presence of God. That's all you could do is just hit the ground and say, I am so unworthy, but you are amazing. That's your, that's your only response. And, um, and you're going to do that in heaven. I don't know how it's going to be. But I think that's, you know, it's crazy. Everybody, as soon as they sing, they say, every knee will bow. No matter who you are, if you're going to be Bin Laden, if you're going to be, um, you know, so what is Chris Brown, the singer, if you're going to be Trump, if you're going to be Julia, whoever you are, as soon as you see him, you're going to hit the deck and bow. And not because he's forcing you, because you, you, you will see Okay, so that's the idea. So will you be doing that forever? In the garden, that wasn't the point. It was for their life to glorify God. All right, so let's keep going. Whoops. All right, so 
James 1, 17 to 18, and I'm going to ask Julia to read it, please. Uh, 16 to 18. Can you read this for us? <clears throat> so my very dear friends, don't get thrown off course. Every desirable and beneficial gift comes out of heaven. The gifts are rivers of light cascading down from the Father of light. There's nothing to deceitful in God, nothing too faced, nothing fickle. He brought us to life using the true word, showing us off as the crown of all his creatures. All right, so everything good comes from God, okay? So relate this to heaven. If everything good comes from God, and the guy who created everything created a space for him to live as well as the rest of humanity that, that you know, goes to heaven, what would it be like? Is it really going to be that boring? Is it going to be that boring? You know, and today our goal is to shatter the idea that heaven's going to be boring. Okay, that's the goal. Every good and perfect gift. All right. So let me ask you guys, what are some good things you enjoy about life? Anything. Animals. All right. Animals. Yeah. Animals. All right. Puppies. <laughs> Food. Food. What else? Friends. Friends. I need some of those. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Kim, you gotta like something. Tacos. Tacos, yes. <laughs> we'll put that in there. That's its own category. What, uh, what else? I guess you can, say, you can say freedom that we have. Freedom? Relationships. 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 Friends, relationships. What other stuff do you enjoy? What kind of hobbies do you like? Josh, what do you like to do? If you had a day off work, what would you do? Just travel. Travel? Do you think you could do okay, whatever. Let's let's just <laughs> travel. Vacation. Swimming. Vacation. Can I swim in heaven? Can you swim in heaven? There's gonna be no seat, actually. So sorry. Oh, you know what, Carla? You missed it, girl. I missed what? You missed it. C. No, I know. It's. I already studied it. (laughs) Anyways, go ahead. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. (laughs) What? Huh? Helping others. Helping. Serving others. Serving. All right, some things you enjoy. Working out. <laughs> I like it, but I don't do it. I don't Sports. <laughs> shopping. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shopping. Why not? Who knows? Maybe you could design clothes for everybody. Read. 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 Watch a movie. Movie. Read. What'd you say? Dance. Dance? I don't know. I think, I think okay. that's evil, isn't it? I think that's a sin. That's simple. That's <laughs> not <laughs> one. All right, what about music? Playing music? Singing? Obviously, karaoke. right? It's karaoke. I don't know how to spell that. Let's forget that. Honestly, like, <laughs> studying, like, God's Word, like, that, like, like I do that on my free time. Studying God's Word? Ew. No, I'm just kidding. Studying the Bible? What would you... What, what, do you think, what, what do you think studying the Bible is going to be like in heaven? I mean... I hope that there's going to be, like, a giant <laughs> library of memories. Imagine? And then you can just, like, go back in time. Really? And, like, see the whole Why thing. not? I hope it is. Oh, my gosh. I hope have to in this stuff excites wow. me. <laughs> Elmer, what do you like to do? Sleep. Video games. Well, I wonder if there's going to be in there. Fortnite. Oh, right. I doubt it. You know what I I think That's you might you might be the Fortnite character, but not killing people, doing other stuff. Who knows, huh? No, there might be a game and you could shoot, that'd be awesome. <laughs> You're <laughs> so dumb. Real life. You're innocent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alright, so here's some stuff you like. Any others? Sorry. All right, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of Lights. All right, so either James is lying. Or really, every good thing comes from God. In Genesis 1-3, um, Satan comes to Eve and says, Is it really 
is that biting the fruit really won't kill you. You know, God's just trying to, God's just trying to keep some stuff from you. And we found out later that actually God was right. They did die uh, spiritually. You know, they, and they actually had to die physically. That was the curse. <laughs> so everything good comes from God. I wonder if these are all sinful or if they're all God kind of, when we're made in His image, if this is part of the stuff we're designed to do, to like. Some of us are more inclined to music. Some of us are more inclined to dancing. Some of us are more inclined to <laughs> studying. Some of us like serving, some like tacos, some like lasagna. You know, we're all different. Is that wrong? Did God design it that way? You know, everything good comes from God. Everything evil. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no. All uh, right, what are the good things we can think of, things we enjoy in life? We've you know, got a lot of these. It all originates with God. I think it all goes back to its source, goes back to God. I was thinking about iPhones. I was like, well, if it all comes from God, then what about iPhones? That didn't come, you know. But, but I think God, ingenuity, that ability to create comes from God. He didn't actually make video games, but He designed us with the capacity to design them, to work together in teams, to, to you know do un things that you could never imagine could be accomplished. So we're made in His image with ingenuity, all right? And now for the big one, who created sex? Who created it? Was it the devil? God. I don't know. What do you mean? Of course, yes. All right, God designed the big S. So, uh, I was doing some research on YouTube. I typed Whoa. in not. <laughs> so I didn't type that. Yeah. I typed in heaven. All right. You're I typed heaven in YouTube, and all these songs came up about a girl. You know, there's this country one that's really popular. I don't know who sings it. It's called Heaven. Yeah, actually, really good. Kane mm -hmm. Brown. Yeah, I was listening. Man, that's a good one. Shoot. And he's talking about, you know, I can't, he says, I can't imagine heaven or, with, with you. lying with you or something like that. You know, it's like, man, I can, I'll have to sing that someday. You know, <laughs> that's a good one. But I mean, you think about that, that you know, God is the one who made that, those feelings, those, you know, the, the pleasures, it didn't come from the devil. God did. It's not wrong. I mean, God designed it to be in a certain thing, but everything good you can think of here on the earth came from Him. Drugs? Not good. But I know I heard this week is that drugs can be a good thing. Like if you're getting surgery, they give you a little just to numb the pain or, you know, to, to put you out so you can go through it. I mean, they use properly, everything's good. You know, I even saw that even marijuana has like this, you can make a paste and put it on your wounds or rashes and it helps. Like, yeah. So it has its benefits, but we abuse everything. We abuse it, everything. You know, we use it the way it's not supposed to. And But God originally designed everything to be good. So when you think about heaven, okay, just apply this to heaven. If everything good comes from God, is heaven really going to be that boring? You know, you just think about now. Every, you know, God's given us every, you know, everything we have now. He's everything good He's given us. Imagine in a world where there's no sin, no evil, not, you know, there's nobody tearing it up. It's Him. He's in control, and He's blessing you. Everything is heightened. You're going to be able to. One, I wonder if you're going to be able to go snowboarding and swimming and enjoy it. You know. Here's another one in John 10.10. 10. And we're going to let Carla read it so she can wake up already. Go ahead, Charlie. John 10.10. 10. The yep. thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Yep. I came that it may have life and have it abundantly. All right, so Jesus came to give us life abundantly. And then just to take us to heaven and be bored for the rest of our lives. 
do not make any sense. You know, I, I just, I've been, I just because I've been wrestling with it. Because I think even in myself, when I think of heaven, I think the same thing. Oh, we're going to be worshiping forever. I think, yes, absolutely, we're going to be worshiping forever. We're going to be singing, but also in everything we do, we're going to be worshiping. Every, every breath. So if Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly, I think heaven is going to be life to the well, we'll see what we should be having now. I mean, he, that's that verse is talking about right now that we can have spiritual life. We can have, um, you know, life more abundantly. So, what is heaven going to be like? All right, that was just to get you thinking. And I, now I want to give you three things. All right, and actually you guys are going to come up with them. The Revelations 22, 1 to 5. All right, so this little verse here is... Verses has a few words in here that kind of give us a glimpse of what's going to be happening in heaven. All right, just a glimpse. Um, can I, can you read it from there? Can you help us over? Can you read up to verse three? Uh, then he showed me a river of water, of the water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street, on either side of the river, was the tree of life bearing twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Alright, so that's a little visual into heaven. There's a Wait. tree. Sorry, go ahead. So is there going to be time in heaven? Um, what I was reading, that there will be, because there's months. Right. Twelve months. But God doesn't live in time. There's going to be time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty clear, though, that there's 12 months, and there's seasons. Or we also heard that revelation is already something that already passed or happened. Oh, no, this is, this is, this is clearly talking about the new, you know, the new earth, the new heaven. Oh, this, this part. Yeah, this is, you're right, though, a lot of revelation, you know, but this part is into the future, into the new heaven, because that's what it's talking about in the, in the chapters up to it. Yeah, so that's something we can talk about. But I, yeah, there's the book I'm reading talks about that. But it seems so. Months, time. There's a tree like there was in the Garden of Eden. There's a tree of life. Healing of the nations. All right, verse 3. There will no longer be any curse. All right, you remember what curses happened when Adam and Eve sinned? Yeah. What Labor were they? Pains. Labor pains. And then men working. By the sweat of your brow, you will turn the ground, and thorns and thistles will come up from the earth. It didn't used to be that way. You know, all, everything we do, the work we do now, is totally changed. Rather than us helping cultivate trees, we take them down, you know. And we do that for money, which is very profitable sometimes. But, you know, we just, uh, work has totally changed. And that's another topic, you know, what kind of work will you do in heaven, but... Um, there will no longer be any curse. The curse is gone. And the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and His bond servants will serve Him. Alright, so what will we do in heaven? Here's the first thing. We're going to serve Him. What could you possibly do serving God in heaven? Hmm. What would you do? Any thoughts? It's true. I mean, there's no more people to turn. No, you're not going to be evangelizing. Exactly. No, no, no. you don't need to do that. Everybody's you saved. You don't need to be preaching. You do not need saved. to preach. Everybody knows God. Yes? I think that a big part of it will be um, that we will be in communion. It's like... <clears throat> He desires to be in communion with us forever. But what part of that is serving? Huh? Serving. Oh, she said, what, how does it relate to serving? How does it relate to serving? That I don't think it's going to be in the way that we think of it now in our human nature. I don't think it'll be that. I think it's from what all that we know about God and all that we've been um, here on earth, we're called to because Jesus served himself. Jesus went up to be at the right hand of his father. He went to be in communion with him. So I don't think that 
serve is going to be in the same manner maybe that we the idea that we have of serving now right. is going to be the same when we are in communion with him. Who knows what this word means, bond servants. You know what it means? Carla? Bond servant. <laughs> I didn't know what it meant either, so I blame it. I'm just wondering. Uh, so, it, it's definitely a servant. It's almost like a slave, but <laughs> it's a different type. It's one who willingly submits. So, like you, for, for you, for you and I, you willingly say to Jesus, now, I accept you as my what? Lord and Savior. Lord and Savior. You know what Lord means? Master. Master. You know, you sh I live to serve you. I give you my life. So when it talks about bond service, it's not like he's forcing you to be a slave, like we have that imagery. No, no, no. We willingly submit. It's an honor. And you will serve him. And what will you do serving him? Okay, well, who's him? All right, so we know this this new kingdom comes out of heaven, right? And we, we it was like 1,200, 1,400 miles long. You know, we got into all that. But there's this somebody on the throne, right? It's God sitting on the throne. And you're going to serve him. Would that be... Uh, you got to either de decide, is that going to be a privilege? Or is it going to be a... Uh -huh. Um, a dread, you know, and I think it's hard to imagine here on earth, unless you unless you're under a good boss or a good leader, somebody you're under to, and they care for you, which we'll talk about in a minute. Sorry. If you didn't want to be there, or if you were like, oh, I don't want to serve God, like you wouldn't be there. You wouldn't be there. So everybody would be filtered through already. Right. So everybody I mean, who's there would be there. What do we say about hell? Hell is locked from the inside. From the inside you know, because you don't want to go. You don't want to be with God if you, when you go to hell. So, if you're there in heaven, it's because you, well, you want to be with Him, you know, and you want to serve Him. And let's let's finish it up. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. What would that possibly mean? Who anybody ever seen God's face? In the Bible. Jesus. Jesus. God himself. You're fine, glimpse of glory. Glimpses. If you were to see his face, the Bible said you would die. God said it, you'll die. He can't. He just can't do it. You think we'll be able to see his face then? It says it right there. Shoot, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they will see his face. <laughs> and his name will be on their foreheads. So I, what I was reading on a commentary is that his name will be on the forest. It's just, you, it's going to be so evident that you belong to him. That it's, you know, it's like he's going to make it so known that they're mine. Name is written on their forehead. You know, when, I, when we read that, I kind of think of Moses when he went up and saw the glimpse of glory and came back down and he was just shining. Like, just shining. Yeah. So, you know, it's going to be written all over you, I guess. So you're going to be a bond, you're going to be a servant. You're going to see his face. You're going to have a relationship with this God. You're going to know him. And there will no longer be any night. They will have no need of the light of a lamp. There's lots of, there's lots of stuff that night means. Nor the light of the sun, because the Lord God will illumine them, and they will reign forever and ever. All right? So, um... What'd you say? You're terrible. Um, okay, so we're going to serve God. So like in the garden, God gave Adam and Eve a job. Take care of the earth. Enjoy it. Multiply. I wonder if he's going to do the same thing in heaven. You know, the, have you heard the parable of the talents where God gives everybody different talents, right? Five, two, one. And they all did something with them. And then he came back and he says, Well done. Come in, good and faithful servant. You were faithful with this. I'm going to give you more. And the guy who did nothing, you wicked, lousy, faith, 
unfaithful, ugly, you know, he just hammers him. <laughs> Blessings. So, in heaven, would God give us tasks to do, to serve him? I wonder if God's going to use your greatest strengths and gifts for his kingdom. Like, every one of us has a gift and a talent. Julia, she's gifted to do certain, she loves art. She loves face painting with makeup and beauty. You know, I wonder if God's going to utilize her talent. Say, you're going to be doing this. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> you know, every one of us, God knows so intimately, He's going to use you exactly where you need to be. Uh, and I'll say, God, I'll take care of the oak trees, please. You know, or something. You know, we'll just. But He'll know exactly what you're going to do. You're, the way He designed you to be will be um, used to its full potential in heaven. That's, that's, you know, that's what I'm, with, as far as serving. See His face, you'll know Him. That what, you know, like in the garden where they walked with God, God knew them and they had a relationship. It'll be like that. Um, and, you know, uh, something that, to think about is how, that same freedom. Can you imagine that being butt naked? With your girl or with your guy, which is some of the girls, buck naked with, and God's walking right next to you. You know that type of freedom. I don't think we're gonna be butt naked though. Right. It's cold. No, yeah, it would be, it would be <laughs> cold. Yeah, that's right. But I wonder. I was thinking about this today. It kind of hit me. I was like, can we have that same relationship with God right now? Is that possible to have that same okay. openness? I don't know. And uh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And the same thing. Is, and the last one, reign with him. What does that mean? We read that. And they will reign forever and ever. What does that mean? Three things we're gonna do: serve him, see his face, reign forever and ever. God's a king, king of the universe. We're his servants, and he's going to give us tasks to do, to reign with him, to oversee the universe. That'd be crazy. Some of us can't even handle certain little things. Like Josh is taking care of these flowers. He's doing a fantastic job. You know? And God's going to say, you're going to take care of my flowers now. You know, whatever it's going to be. But God, God he wants to... I, look, I'm just reading it. It says that we're going to reign with him. And reign means rule. But you're going to help. So we will help God rule. We'll help him reign. We'll be his servants the way God always intended it to be. To rule. Uh, when Adam and Eve were placed in the garden, we were going to rule the whole garden. So how boring is heaven going to be? Singing forever? I think we will be singing. But that's not all we're going to do. And when we sing, we're going to do it because he's going to be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And I, I think of it like marriage. Um, you know, you wonder, is, uh, man, I just can't imagine being committed to somebody for the rest of my life. I just can't do it, you know? Just, you know, thinking about, not that I'm saying that, but yeah. just, you know, if you think about that, you know, like, that's terrible. I, I think of the same, like with God being in a relationship with him, to tell the, like Elmer when he marries his wife, you know, to, to look at her every day and he says, I love you, you're so beautiful. I just, you know, he's, she ain't forcing him to say it, he just can't help it. And I think it's the same thing with God when you, when you that relationship, and Josh coming up soon, you know, he's going to be waking up every morning smelling beautiful breath and seeing wonderful, you know. Every morning he's going to just be, you are beautiful. It's not forced. It just comes out. And I, I just think that's how it's going to be in heaven. The praise is going to be, no. it's just going to be happening, coming out. And, uh, and we're going to be, you know, I, I, from what we're saying, it's going to be like earth now, but perfected, doing awesome stuff. I think we're going to be working. I think I'm going to be, we'll be building. I'll be doing stuff maybe I never imagined doing. Building a house. I don't know. David will be welding stuff. 
you know, God will say, can you build me a garage in the back? And he'll be fixing all the windows and the doors. And, you know, who knows? But, uh, he yeah, heaven is not, sorry. When you mentioned it, I was wondering if you could get hurt in heaven. Right. You could break a finger. Yeah, huh? No. Good question. Good worker. <coughs> You're going to work, I mean. Yeah. Well, I'm sure God will heal you if you did. Just, oh, here you go. <laughs> You're healed. You know. I don't know. You know, it's amazing. But it's, you know what? It, it, in Peter, it says to look forward to it. And that's what I was thinking. What, what can you take away from this is that, you know, God really wants you to look forward to this place you're going to spend with him forever. You know, if you think it's boring, then you don't know God. You know, you don't know what he's capable of. You don't know who really created everything you think is awesome. He did. You know, every, everything you could possibly think of, it was him. And if you don't like serving him now, you're definitely not going to like serving him in heaven. You know, I think that's the, the, the privilege to serve God in heaven is because you served him now. Like that, that verse says, if you're faithful with a little, if you're faithful with the one talent, I will give you more. You know, so who knows? Steve could be overseeing all the services in heaven. And again, look, there ain't going to be no church in heaven. That's not how it's going to be. It's going to be God, and wherever He is, that's church. You know, it's just, I don't know, it's going to be different. But look forward to it um, as we go. So, what will we do? There's a lot more stuff, but this is just kind of helping you out with something that, so when they ask you, are you going to be singing forever? Well, you decide. A lot more than that. So, uh, let's close it up today. And if you, hey, if you guys have questions you want us to answer next week, will the next week will be the last, will, the last one. Questions about it, like, will you be married in heaven? Will you break your leg or fingers? You know, any. If the Bible has answers, the marriage one is the touchy one. So, um, let's pray. Let's pray and let's close.